We left off with Dave moving around the first level. Now we'll help him get through the next several levels by allowing him to walk through the exit door. We'll also implement screen scrolling, the gun, and the jetpack. Right now nothing happens when Dave touches the exit door. We'll fix that by throwing in more variables for game state. I'll add a counter for the number of lives, then some flags for picking up the trophy, the gun, and the jetpack. Then we'll add a chain of variables for firing the weapon using the jetpack and flying up and down. Remember the try prefix variables trap the keyboard and the Dave prefix is for applying validated actions. So the problem is getting Dave to interact with the door. Now the door is tile 2, so if Dave collides with tile 2, we'll set a flag to check for level changes. Add that to the game state. In fact, let's add pickup cases for the trophy and for the gun as well. We'll clear the keyboard input after each frame. In the pickup item procedure, we'll add the cases which set the flags. Picking up the jetpack sets the value to max, which we'll use as the fuel counter. Picking up the trophy will add a thousand points to the score and set the flag. Picking up the gun sets the flag. Now we need a new function in the update game section that checks for level wide events, such as Dave exiting the level. Let's add that close to the end. In update level, we'll check if Dave has collided with the door. If so, we'll check if he has the trophy. And if that's all true, we'll check the current level, increment it, and I'll call a function that doesn't exist yet, but will soon. If we're already at the last level, then we'll just quit. All right, maybe the player deserves a pat on the back if they get this far. If the player didn't have the trophy, then we'll just reset the flag. Now we'll declare and define the start level function. First, let me throw it in before the game loop too. Right now the function does nothing, but let's build to make sure the code is working. Looks good. When we start a level, the most important task is to put Dave in the right starting position. Now, Based on the current level, we'll set the X and Y positions. We'll also force update the pixel position. We should also reset the level dependent flags. Dave loses his collectibles between the levels. You know, let me make sure we've initialized some of the new flags back in the original init game. Alright, let's give this a try. Pick up the trophy, exit the level, and we're on level 2. And there goes Dave. Let me make jumping a little bit more forgiving so we don't have to waste too much time during testing. I want Dave to float a little bit longer, so let's make him not change position at all at the top of his jump. There's nothing else to do since the screen doesn't scroll just yet, but we'll do that now. At the beginning of the Move Dave procedure, let's make sure his grid position is correct based on the pixel position. So when Dave is near the edge of the screen, we'll set that scroll variable that we created back in the first video. Well, it did scroll, but Dave should probably update his pixel position on the screen as well. Let's make the draw destination vary with the view position. I'll also make a variable out of this tile index since we'll be animating at some point soon. Oh, 
Okay, well, it's sort of working, but it's a little erratic. Let me double check that boundary. Ah, it's a little too wide. This should be 18, not 15. It's forcing more scrolling than necessary. All right, everything looks good, so let's see how far we can go. Level three, pick up the gun that doesn't work. I don't really need to avoid these plants yet since Dave doesn't die yet. Now here's the first place we need to use the jetpack, but it doesn't work yet either. Let's add more game state variables for Dave's bullets. Remember that only one bullet can be active at a time. I'll do the same for enemy bullets. Maybe I should add them to the monster structs, but I can't recall if multiple monsters can all have a single active bullet or just one monster. I'll keep it for now since I've already started. It's easy fix later. We'll need to track Dave's last facing direction. When we fire the gun, the bullet's direction will match Dave's direction. In move Dave, we'll make sure that the direction is set. It's a signed variable, so we'll just use negative one for left and one for right. Let's plug in our new toys to the keyboard handler. Down and up for the jetpack directions. Left control fires the gun and left alt activates the jetpack. Let's initialize all of our new variables to zero on level start. Now we'll verify our inputs. Dave should only be able to fire the gun if there isn't already a bullet in the world. If Dave has the jetpack, then it should toggle itself. If Dave is using the jetpack, then down should work if it's clear. Same thing for up. Let's copy the directional behavior to the jetpack up and down actions. When Dave fires the gun, the bullet's direction should match Dave's direction. If Dave is facing forward, then we'll make the bullet go right. We want the bullet to start slightly in front of Dave depending on the direction he's facing. We'll also start halfway down his body. We're done firing, so reset the flag. To make the bullets move, we'll need to make an update procedure for them and plug them into the game loop. We'll skip this procedure if there isn't a bullet in the world. We want the bullet to travel fast, so let's make it skip four pixels based on the direction. If the bullet ends up in a solid tile, then we'll turn it off by setting its location to zero. Finally, bullets cease to exist once they hit the edge of the screen. Now we'll draw the bullet. It's very similar to drawing Dave since both need pixel precision. One difference is our tile depends on the direction the bullet is facing. The bullet heading right is tile 127 and left is 128. Hmm, the bullet isn't being drawn. Oh, but it just hit the gem on the right there. Let me try shooting at the gem on the far left. So the bullet is there, it's moving, and it's collecting gems for Dave. Let's try to fix this. Forgot to add draw bullet to the renderer. Now 
Now we have the bullet, and it's apparently locked to Dave's Y position. Let's fix that. Copy and paste is the best way to introduce bugs. Test again. The bullet is there, but it's still executing the pickup action for Dave. It's also firing the gun on level start. Let me see if that's true. Oh, I forgot to initialize Dave fire to zero. Now to avoid bullets picking up objects, we'll pass another argument to is clear that says whether the check is for Dave or not. If it's not Dave, then we won't execute the pickup code. This should probably be refactored into its own function at some point. Test. Oh yeah, I better modify all the prior uses of is clear. Too bad C doesn't support default arguments. Let's make sure we have them all. Okay, the gun is good to go for now. Dave still can't finish level 3 without a working jetpack, so let's take care of that. We'll do the drawing first. If Dave is using the jetpack, then we'll pick the tiles based on direction. Otherwise, we'll go with a jumping sprite. I guess we need to initialize the jetpack variable on start. Well, the jetpack is on, but we still have gravity holding us back. Now, if you notice that quick flicker, we need to have a delay between turning the jetpack on and off, or else we'll see that. We'll tick the delay under Update. And remove gravity for Jetpack Dave. Hmm, the jump procedure is still interfering with us. Let's block jump for Jetpack Dave. Make sure the delay blocks the toggle. There's still a barrier of some kind. Ah, the collision point here we copied without changing. I'm sure you've noticed how bad copying and pasting is in programming. Feels like jump is still in play here. Let's try this. Let's 
There it is. Jetpack Dave is ready to go. Let's finish that start level procedure. We can go back to the modding info from Level S and Malvinius and just plug in the information. The last change I'll make is to make sure that Dave returns to a neutral position after every jump. Alright, last run. Dave can grab the gun and shoot. Then we can grab the jetpack and take off to finish the level. Next time we'll bring in enemies to fight and get the level hazards working.